In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a simple audio looper using the audio table module in Reactor. So this is going to be a monophonic ensemble. So the first thing I'm going to do is reduce the number of voices to one. And then let's put a audio table in its own macro and take a look at it. All right, so as you can see, both in the structure view and in the properties over here, there's a ton of different options that come with the audio table module. So we're only going to use a few of them today, uh, really as few as possible, just to get our feet wet. So over here in the file heading in the properties, um, there's a few different buttons you can use to create a new file that the audio table is associated with or to save the data currently in the audio table or to load a existing audio file into the audio table. So we're going to use the last option and load up an audio file to play back. Alright, so by default I find the audio table to be a little ugly so let's go into the view mode and just take off the horizontal scroll bars and the label and the value options can be off as well. All right, this looks a little cleaner now in my opinion. So although the audio table has a bunch of different inputs here, we can actually ignore almost all of them and just focus on the RX input in order to read back a location in the audio file that we have loaded up. So to do that, I'm going to use a ramp oscillator with an amplitude that's equal to the uh, length of the audio file. And the length of the audio file is given in units, which you can select in the audio table properties here. You can see right now we have it set to milliseconds. So we're going to read back, um, well the audio table will read back the time at the RX input in milliseconds is the part of the table uh, that we'll be playing back. So we'll give the oscillator the amplitude equal to the length in milliseconds. And we need to set the frequency. So at the easiest level, we want the frequency to uh, correspond to the length of the audio file as well. So we're going to take the time in milliseconds and divide 1000 over that time to get the frequency value associated with the length of the file. And if you don't understand what I just did there, um, <clears throat> I just did a whole tutorial on converting between frequency and milliseconds and BPM and other values, so you can check that out. Alright, so you can see uh, as soon as I connected that, it started playing back, which is just what we wanted. However, it sounds a little scratchy, and the way to fix that is to use the interpolation option here in the properties of the audio table, and just turn interpolation for X on. So we're only using the X axis of the table at this point in time anyway, so you don't need to worry about the Y axis at all. Okay, so that sounds a lot better immediately. Uh, so the next thing to do is let's have this loop so it's not always playing, but that it's only playing when you have uh, a MIDI note pressed, and we can we also want to restart the playback upon a new gate press. So we'll just make a simple AR envelope that we can multiply against the output, and that'll make sure that the audio is only playing when there's a MIDI note being played. And it's also very easy to sync the beginning of a new playback with the gate. And just attach the output of the gate module into the sync input of the ramp oscillator. And done. Okay, so that works. Uh, now let's add some other simple effects. Uh, the first I'd like to do is one that will change the speed of playback. So we can double the speed or half the speed or even play the file in reverse. 
So to do that, we can actually just multiply the frequency of our ramp oscillator by a variable value we'll call speed, and that can have a range from uh, negative 2 to 2. And uh, we'll just give it a default value of 1 so we can double click it for uh, normal playback speed at any time. Alright, and then so we'll just connect that value to the frequency input of the ramp oscillator and we'll be done. Alright, so the last thing I want to do is to limit the range of playback to a specific point in the file. Um, so we'll want both a start and a length knob. So let's create the length knob first and give it a range from 0 to 1. And we're going to multiply this knob against the total number of milliseconds in the file. So if the knob's equal to 1, then we'll play back the whole file. If it's equal to 0, we'll pay back nothing. And anywhere in between, we'll play back just a part of the file. Alright, so the output of that can become our new amplitude. And we can also use our new amplitude to calculate the frequency of the ramp oscillator instead of the total length of the file. We just want to use the partial length of the file for that calculation. So that even looks a little cleaner as well. Um, and then after that, we want to have a way to change not just the length, but also the starting point. So. What we can do is duplicate this length knob and just to change the knob from length to start. And we will end up adding the output of that to the ramp oscillator. And that'll give us an offset to our ramp oscillator value. And the audio table itself will uh, clip and wrap the input to the RX uh, input if it's greater than the file length, it'll simply wrap it back around so uh, that we won't get any problems from that. Alright, so let's just take a moment to rearrange our panel view here. Okay, and so the last thing I want to do is change the audio table so that it only displays the part of the file that's actually going to be played back. And this is a pretty easy thing to do. We're simply going to connect the start value to the X origin input and the length value into the X range input. And then we have a quick uh, change to make in the properties. We just want to turn the auto fit for X off and turn the alignment all the way over to the left. Okay, that's it for today. Join us next week for more on audio tables.